wanted to, again, thank you for being here. I can advance my slide, that would be great. <laughs> Our goal here at ED Chat is to bring executive directors together. It, it doesn't have to be executive directors, your board members, anybody who makes a decision, bring us together to discuss how nonprofits and NGOs use technology to advance your mission, because it's all about the mission, right? Hi again, everybody. I'm Aretha Simons with TechSoup. If, you, if this is your first time meeting me, I've worn many hats, as I know many of you do, with being a board of director, executive director, uh, fundraiser, you name it, the grant writer, the one who does everything um, just to make everything flow. And so I appreciate you all being here. I want you to know, for those of you who are new here today, if you this is your first time visiting TechSoup, we are much more than just a place that you can get some awesome um, hardware or software. We also have a great online community. I don't know if you've heard of TechSoup Connect. Make sure you go to the event page and check us out. There's so many other free workshops. We have peer learning opportunities, our blogs and webinars, which you are really on a webinar. Amazing opportunity for us to connect with each other. And then we have lots of courses. Most of them are free. And some of them, there are you know, very little small amount that you need to pay to get all this great advice. One of them I want to talk about today is managing remote teams for your nonprofit managers. And that's going to kind of tie in what we're going to talk about today with our strategic planning and the SWAT challenge. But this is a six week course is our 300 level course. We'll put the link in the chat box. And this is a great way for you to get your team together, bring everybody together. It's limited to 50 people, but what you'll learn in this six weeks is how to um, designate a digitized workflow for your nonprofit because we are in digital era and it's going to keep going faster and going forward. Learn how to enhance your communication during this class, during this course, excuse me. You'll learn how to engage with your community or customers or your constituents. Um, you'll learn how to host virtual conferences fundraisers, events, workshops, seminars, which I know a lot of you are doing um, virtual fundraising events, how to budget for remote and manage your team, and then how to launch your team into action. So this is all a Microsoft Teams event. It's going to be great. Um, it starts May 26. I was going to say March. We're past March. It starts May 26. And make sure you click on the link. If you don't get the link today, then I'll be sending, sending it through our um, follow-up. So just a few housekeeping, everybody, please remain on mute. You are on mute. Um, for those of you, you know, don't want to be on video, I understand, you know, maybe you're eating lunch. Again, it's, it's noon somewhere. If you would love to raise your hand, use the reaction button and click the raise your hand, and then I'll ask you to unmute yourself. Otherwise, continue to engage with each other in the chat room. You all shared some great information with each other. You were sharing tips and, hey, connect with me here on LinkedIn. So continue to do that. Again, this is all about you. ED Chat, again, it's a space for us to connect. We want to learn more about you as you learn more about TechSoup and how technology can advance your mission. We are in this community together, and I can't say this enough, that this is all about you. And we want you to invite other EDs to the conversation. Don't keep this good information to yourself. Invite other executive directors, invite other nonprofits, become a, a featured nonprofit. Now I know when you sign up on the events page, it says become a featured nonprofit, but no. Sometimes I want to invite you in to be my co-host. So make sure you um, sign up for every ED chat. And then I do want to know some of the topics that you would like to discuss. So do me a favor and type in the chat box some of the topics that you would like to discuss. And that's also going to be on our survey. Please fill out our survey. This is going to help us help you as we go forward. Now, today, as I said, we were going to be talking about the SWOT analysis. Um, for those of you who've never done it, you know, in school or college, uh, it's just an acronym for your strength, your weakness, your opportunities, and threats. So I'm going to break this down a little bit more. If you can, if you're able to, get a piece of paper and pen and just write down all the strengths of your organization. What do you think are the strengths of your organization? Do you have a great board? Um, are they active? Is your mission and vision strong? 
And then what are the weaknesses of your organization? Do you have issues with raising funds? Um, you write down all of your weaknesses. And again, I'm going to tell you how this is going to tie in a little later. And then the opportunities. Now that's external, like what kind of support from donors that kind of, you know, make your organization grow and how are you reaching out and getting in touch with other constituents to help your organization? There are many opportunities that you may see that you could do, but you just haven't done it. And then the threats. What are things that really could really hurt your organization? Again, lack of funding could definitely be one. That could be a weakness, fundraising, and then lack of funding. But I want you to write down all your threats. So when we do that, people say, well, what do we do this information? Well, this is where your strategic plan comes in. This is how you will then write down your goals. And your goals are simply kind of your direction for where you want to go. Write down who's going to tackle this goal, assign it to somebody, and then the deadline. But look, I'm not going to be doing all the talking today. I have some co-hosts with me today. We have some featured executive directors here with us today. We have Ben. Um, ben, if you're here, if you unmute yourself. And then we have Claudia Humphrey and we have Janine Bishop. Make sure you screenshot their information. I'll again share it with you after the, the chat today. But make sure you screenshot so you can get in touch with them because I promise you, you're going to want to connect with them afterwards. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can come live and we'll start with Ben. Again, I is Ben here today because I told you I'm having technical difficulty, so I'm not able to see. Now I'm able to see. Okay, so Ben is not here yet. Well, I'm going to talk about strength then. So I, I wanted to um, tap Ben to maybe have him share about the strength of this organization. So I was recently talking to a nonprofit, and she said the strength of our organization is really with our board of directors. I mean, they are so passionate about our organization and they really give everything. So I was like, that is incredible. But I wanted to ask Claudia, if you would, oh, Ben, somebody said they see Ben. Ben, would you unmute yourself? Oh, hi, Ben, how are you? Thank you. See, that's, that's so the community sorry. sharing. Okay, Ben, can you tell me about your organization and uh, what are the strengths of your organization? Sure, yeah, I'm sorry for, for being here late. Um, so Disaster Accountability Project is an independent watchdog of disaster relief and humanitarian aid. Started after Hurricane Katrina as a way of improving um, both government and non-government actors in, in that space. Um, we have a platform called Smart Response that curates localized how to help lists so that donors can find the organizations that are operating locally when disasters happen. Say three strengths would be um, one, we have an amazing uh, group of volunteers that we recruit mostly using volunteer match. Um, two, we have an amazing board. Uh, also many are recruited via volunteer match, but, um, but I think largely they're amazing because we have a give get and they, they come to the organization knowing that they have to give and that that's part of their involvement. Um, and three, through Smart Response, we have an incredible network of local nonprofits and NGOs around the world that are a part of that. And we have over 600 in that network. And hopefully some of you that provide human services that you know, and are involved after disasters or could be involved after disasters will we'll, we'll join that network. Okay. And so what are the strengths of the organization? Of the I'm organization? Listening? Yes. What would you say the um, strengths of of your organization? Well, that we have an amazing network of, of nonprofit partners now around the world that provide services after disasters. Wow. We have an incredible um, group of volunteers that provide most of our hands-on because I'm the only employee. So mm -hmm. all of our work has been really leveraged by volunteers. And we have a strong board that is involved because I think largely in part because of our give get. Mm. Of your give get, is that what you said? Right, so every member of the board has to raise or donate $5,000 a year or some combination. And when we implemented that, it was like, you know, jumping off a cliff, we lost half our board, but we ended up recruiting many more members that were much more dedicated to the financial health of the organization. Wow, 
that's powerful. And so what I what I just heard you say with your your give get policy, you were able to set a goal. You you were able to reach a fundraising goal. You were able to do so many other things. So that was that's awesome. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I appreciate that. So give me give me in one second how what kind of technology do you use and how has TechSoup helped your organization? So we we use the AWS credits. Um, that's like a no brainer. All of our web hosting for smart responses on AWS. And um, I've written to them separately and asked them for additional credits every year and they've been very helpful. So wow. beyond what AWS provides through TechSoup, uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS. And you can get that through TechSoup Boost. So you need to get Boost first for that. Um, we've used QuickBooks, which has been very helpful through, um, through TechSoup. Um, and I'm sure there's more, but, um, it's a great, I mean, I don't know, I hope, hopefully everyone is using, utilizing TechSoup okay. service. I think Microsoft Word we've mm -hmm. utilized. And I mean, if someone from TechSoup can <laughs> look at my account, they can correct me. It's probably more, <laughs> but we're very well, grateful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. We're grateful that you use these products because I'm sure they help you save money in the end. Yes. Well, thank you. And thank you for being my co-host, Ben. Thank you. All right. So next, I would like to invite uh, Claudia Humphrey. Claudia. Claudia Humphrey. Uh -huh. She will be my next co-host. Claudia, would you introduce yourself? And Claudia, I would love if you would focus on your weaknesses. So I'm gonna not do the strength for you. I'm gonna focus on your weaknesses. What are the weaknesses of your organization? Hi, first of all, thank you, uh, Aretha and TechSoup for allowing me to have this opportunity to speak today. I really appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. Um, the name of our organization, we actually have two that we're working on that are nonprofits. One is LIFT3 Support Group. And LIFT3 is an acronym for Leading Individuals Forward Through Tough Times. Um, and it's a domestic violence organization helping victims of domestic violence. Um, what I see is our, um, our weaknesses for our organization. There are several. Um, one um, is the ability to attract and pay for the best talent. Um, our budget uh, has a certain limit uh, of how much we can pay for staffing, um, and we would certainly like to be able to pay more uh, in order to be able to attract and retain that staff. Um, the second weakness that our organization have is uh, for our leadership wearing too many hats. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a, a challenge that I'm sure a lot of other nonprofits are experiencing. And then the third weakness that we have um, is uh, our funding falls short um, of the mission critical task that we have. And we are always trying to uh, find funding, seek funding that matches our mission. Um, but a lot of times with the competition, with a lot of other um, challenges and issues, it's difficult to find funding uh, sometimes in order to be able to meet and to reach all of our mission critical tasks. Wow. Well, you said a lot. I'm sure a lot of nonprofits here can relate to what you're saying about your weaknesses. I mean, uh, staff wearing multiple hats and then the lack of funding. So what what... What do you do? Um, I don't know how often you all get together. What do you do to you know, tackle when you have a lack of funding during time when you need to manage a project? Well, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, our organization is actually in a revamp. Um, we are looking to uh, take a step back uh, and to look at uh, our SWAT or our strength, weaknesses, and opportunities and restructure, reorganize, um, and come back stronger using the experience that we've had over the last uh, 15 years or so to rebuild our organization. Um, so we're taking a step back right now in order to be able to do that. Wow. Um, you know, that's powerful what you said, you've been in existence for 15 years. And so even those who have been around for a long time still have to stop and revamp. And sometimes, you know, 
basically get it together and then restart or you know start on something new so i appreciate you saying that that that's pretty heavy and i'm sure a lot of people can relate to what you're saying so thank you today for being my co-host i appreciate it absolutely thank you thank you so next i would like uh, janine bishop to come on and let us know janine tell us about your organization and about, um, I'm gonna do opportunities for you, share opportunities for your organization. Great, hi everybody, thanks for being here. Thanks for this opportunity, Aretha. I am uh, the executive director of the Alpine Humane Society in very far West Texas. We're kind of in that big blank space that's out in the Western part of Texas there. And um, I'm, I'm actually involved in a lot of different organizations, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about our Humane Society this uh, today. Uh, because we've found that um, opportunities sometimes come out of your weaknesses and your threats. And um, last year kind of uh, really pointed that up for us. Um, we work to uh, encourage and ensure the best lives possible for companion animals out here. And a part, uh, a real core part of our mission is, um, you know, promoting adopted, adoptable animals and getting them uh, into good homes. And um, over the years, we've discovered that because of the very rural na nature of where we live, um, there's just not enough adopters here. So we've done things like, um, develop a very, very robust transport program where we're actually sending animals by ground or by plane to the Pacific Northwest, uh, Minnesota, Michigan, places like that. Um, and just, you know, saving, well, now it's hundreds of lives of cats and dogs by doing that. Um, other kinds of promotions locally that we do try to do, uh, we are taking our animals out into the community, uh, to the food truck parks, things like that. We have a cattery in our thrift store that we operate. Our thrift store supports our mission financially. And we put a cattery there so you can come and sit down on the bench and play with a cat for an hour or whatever and get them adopted. Um, so we're, we're doing a lot of things like that to get our animals out into the community. We're also, um, we realize there's a huge opportunity and a need for us to be an actual partner in the community. Uh, through our thrift store, we're able to provide affordable household needs, things like that for people, clothing, housewares, things like that. Um, we have a pet pantry there where we help people with emergency food if they can't afford their pet food. Um, and other opportunities that, that help us be a part of the community are um, paying for spay neuter services, either in full or in part, vaccines for pets. And our initiative this year is called Pets and People Together. And it's all about making sure that people can keep their pets in their homes. They don't have to surrender them because they can't afford something like getting them spayed or neutered or getting them the proper vaccinations or if their pet gets injured or whatever, that they're able to pay for those things. So those are all the opportunities that we saw that can be uh, very important to our community. And we know how important pets can be to people's health and well being. And so this is the type of thing that we're focusing on this year. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And one thing I picked up, two things I picked up. One, you're in a rural area. So Sorry. I know being in a rural area can be hard. But what I heard you say that you open up a thrift store. I think a lot of nonprofits don't, you know, think about the opportunities they have to, you know, make a, to get income from setting up a thrift store. So that's great. That's a great opportunity for you to, you know, bring in some income while, you know, you're having downtime or fundraising is, is low. So that's great. So I want to ask you, uh, uh, Ben put in that he got his dog from death row in Texas. I don't know what that means, but I know he got a dog. So thank you for sharing that, Ben. What are you going to say? Well, I, I was going to say, and I'm happy to talk to anyone on the, the call today who's interested in thrift stores because um, I did a very deep dive into ours when I came on board and really turned it from totally not profitable to extremely profitable 
except last year was a little bit of a challenge with the shutdowns and that kind of thing. But I'm happy to help anybody with that kind of thing. So, yeah, and you know, the need out here, as I said, is so great. We really have opportunities in seven counties out here, but we really can only afford to work in about four of them. Please, um, they're saying share your information. Everybody, share your information. Claudia, Ben, my, my co-host, share your information. So what I want to do, I want to, I want to shift now and I want to open it up to everybody and, and ask you, what do you think some of your threats are to your organization? Because we all have them. Um, share with me some of your threats. And if you could use the raise your hand option. And if you want to share, you know, something other than your threat, that, that's fine. But use your raise your hand option. And remember, as I said, a threat is basically, you know, maybe you have something in the community and the community is not interested in what you're doing. And so you're not getting a lot of support. It could be anything that you feel is, is an external threat to your organization. Thank you for sharing your information, Janine. Okay, um, let's see. So I'm looking for the reaction. In the reaction, go to the reaction section and raise your hand. And um, RK, how do you get to start with fundraising? You recently um, started, okay. Somebody that went over there. So I'll, I'll reach out back out to the chat room. I'll go back in there and, and swing back around to you. All right, so I'm gonna start with April. You can unmute yourself. Hi, April, tell us. Um, where you're from and feel free to share. Yes, um, I am the director of House of Hope International and we work in four different countries helping victims of human trafficking, girls as young as five years old um, in some of the countries. And we, um, our threats that we're having presently have to do with the political upheaval in the countries that we're working in. And it's gotten almost impossible to say anything by a video. Um, there are no means of communication where we can talk openly with the staff and the boots on the ground in the countries. And um, they have new cyber laws out that you, they can monitor all of your social media, any type of communication. So we've had to develop code words in order to discuss anything. And uh, only when we're seeing each other face to face, like at our board meeting, we had to, you know, we, there were no minutes to certain parts of the board meeting because it's, if it were in writing, then the, then the government of the, one of the countries I work in would, would be able to use that against us. And so that's a really big threat that we're experiencing right now. Wow. So what do you do about that? That's heavy. Yeah, well, you know, the needs are still there and the women and the girls still need the help. And so we're trying to um, operate within the law as much as we can in the different countries, but the laws are getting wackier and wackier and in one country in particular, I'm not going to name, but yes, um, please don't. <laughs> it's, it's um, presenting ever more challenges, especially for that national director and the people on the ground. I mean, I, I have a hard time saying, I have to be real careful what I say. And even when I'm in the United States and I'm fundraising, I was speaking over the weekend and I can't say out loud uh, on a meeting that might be recorded what's really happening. So that's, that's tough. Wow, April, thank you for what you do. I mean, sometimes, you know, um, we never know what the nonprofits are doing and what you have to go through, the struggles you have to go through to do what you do. So thank you for sharing that. Anybody else want to share today? I saw another hand up. Um, please use the raise your hand button and you don't have to share your threats. Um, Janine, yeah, feel free to come back in. I was just going to say real quick, um, you know, this may be true of some of the other organizations as well. Some of our biggest threats come from um, misinformation and lack of um, education on issues that surround our mission. And, um, you know, social media can be very difficult with that kind of thing, too. Um, and sometimes we see opportunities, like, for instance, you know, uh, pit bulls don't always have the best reputation with people as pets. Uh, and we had a Valentine kissing booth with pit bulls, and we had some people that... Uh, 
came to see them and met them and petted them. And it was the first time they'd ever touched a pit bull and they were so amazed and we changed some minds. So a lot of times threats are people just not knowing better and you can make an opportunity out of that by um, you know, responding appropriately with information and education. Wow, I love how you said you can make an opportunity out of your threats. So if you don't write anything down, write that down. That is powerful. Thank you so much. Anybody else would like to share? And all my co-hosts, you can feel free to come back on. Feel free to come back on and share. Very powerful. Remember, this is a challenge. So this is a challenge for you to write down these things for yourself and then move forward to making a strategic plan. Write down the goals for your challenges. How are you going to tackle your um, threats and the opportunities and even your weakness and even your strength. How, how can you make them better and, and who's going to do what and then make a timeline for it as well. All right, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi. Um, our threat is we have term limits. So losing using term limits on positions, we're losing legacy to new members that don't understand the legacy. We're 114 year old or women's organization. And so when you limit a term limit for two years and then you're out of the position and off the board after five, it's total volunteer. You really are losing legacy to people who don't understand the legacy. So trying to keep your legacy alive. <laughs> Well, we know we, we have a dog lover. Yay. <laughs> Jeanine is smiling. So I, I want you to come back on because I'm wondering um, for your, she stepped away, but I'm wondering for everyone with the term limits, do you, are, do you ever sit down and try to revise that, amend that in your bylaws? Or you said your organization is like 100 years old, but has anybody tried to amend the bylaws to change the term limits? And anybody can answer that because I know that that is a problem. You get somebody who's in the groove and then they, they're off the board. Go ahead, Carol. We, we did do our, our bylaws, change our bylaws, but it's a very large board of volunteer women at a university. And so it's very hard to, we want to get people through. We have a hundred, a thousand members, volunteer members of women. So we want new ideas, but just to maintain legacy is the most important thing to me. Mm. is because we do scholarships at a university. And so it's very, but we're our, we're our own 501c3 connected to the university. So just legacy to me is everything or we wouldn't be alive today. Wow, that, that's powerful. That, that's, that's something to write down. So I, somebody, I'm gonna go in the chat room. I see a lot of great, um, Joe says biggest threats are cyber security breaches to start with a single click that can be prevented with free or low cost tool from Cisco called Umbrella, um, used to be called OpenDNS. The cloud checks the links that anyone clicks on to make sure it's not malicious and blocks a click if it's bad. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, we have lots of um, cloud services here. Um, I mean, excuse, excuse me, antivirus uh, software here. So thank you for sharing that, Joe. That is definitely, um, Jay Long, starting an organization to help people aging out of foster care in the foster care to become expert in the industry they choose. Let me read, let me read that again. Starting, I don't know if this is a statement, you start an organization to help people aging out of foster care of currently in foster care to become experts in the industry. Launching this week, you go. Based in Sacramento, now planning on expanding soon. So you definitely need to connect with all the EDs here. Uh, if anybody is in that industry or in that area, in that community, I'll say, with foster care, make sure you reach out. Um, James put his information up there, getyourbrandup.com. And he's on IG as well. So thank you for sharing that and congratulations. Um, you definitely need to continue to come back to ED Chat to connect with the executive directors. You will learn a lot. And then make the executive director emeritus to get around terms. That's what Jared said. So I don't know um, if some, some organizations can do that. Like if you're the founder, sometimes you can say you're the president emeritus or something like that. But for Carol, her organization, you know, is 100 years old. So I'm sure they have lots of history. Um, Janine said, we have the freedom under our bylaws to waive term limits when needed. Very good. 
Um, ben says, question for TechSoup. Is the constant contact discount for renewing existence of, mem of members of constant contact or only for new first-time customers? So we'll have to find that out for you, Ben. If somebody is here from TechSoup that's in the back of the house, you can answer that for Ben. I know we have constant contact too, you guys. There's so many, like I said, if you have software or anything you need to use, make sure you check with uh, TechSoup before. Hi, Nicole. Hi, yeah, I see this question from Ben and I'm not 100% sure I'm actually um, asking someone on our uh, customer service team to get an answer, but I don't believe it's just for um, renewing members. I, I don't think it's those restrictions, whether you're renewing or new, um, as long as you're a nonprofit and meet those eligibility requirements, um, you should be good to go. And I'll include those details in the chat box now. Thank you, Nicole, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And Natalie said, what are the requirements and pros and cons in being a fiscal sponsor for a new organization. I have my comments, but I want to know if is anybody here a fiscal sponsor for other nonprofits? If you are, use the raise your hand button so you can share with Natalie. And I don't see any hands raised. I'm gonna wait a few a few more seconds. So a lot of times when you see those large grants, um, for, for everybody in here, let's use a government grant. And they have to have um, different programs underneath them and say that large organization, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna make up a name, say Aretha Simons International. Aretha Simons International does not do everything. So I might pull Ben's organization in, I might pull Claudia's organization, I might pull Janine's organization in, but I'm the fiscal sponsor. I handle all the money. I might give Ben 10,000, Claudia, uh, 10,000, oh, Janine, 10,000. So I'm the fiscal sponsor for the organization or for all the organizations. So I manage all the money, I do all the reporting, but you all still report to me what you did with the money. So, so there, there are other pros and cons, there are other requirements, um, but I don't know, is anybody in here working under a fiscal sponsor? So again, that's something, if you plan to do that, you definitely need to know all the requirements of the funder who's given the money, what are their requirements? Because that's what's most important because that's the one who you will have to report to because everybody who's an investor wants a return on their investment. That's the one I definitely would find out who you're reporting to. Okay, I'm gonna go in the chat room. If I missed some chats earlier, um, I will we'll definitely reach out to you and answer. And Grace said, our threat is being a virtual organization with me as the only full-time staff trying to create volunteer opportunities in the US when we work, when our work is focused in South Korea. Wow, that is heavy. That is heavy. Um, there are several organizations. Well, I, I'm gonna reach out to you, Grace. Type your information in the chat room uh, and then we'll, I'll circle back around. Uh, Cause I there's an organization that I'll be talking to tonight that um, hosts in that deal with a lot of people in South Korea. So maybe that could be a connection for you. Thank you for sharing that, Eli, the constant contact email. If anybody have any questions, comments, feel free to raise your hand. James Seaton Harvest says, I have 20 years of working with your population and currently work with college students, connecting them with career mentors. Some are aged out. I'm sure he's talking about the foster care system. So thank you for sharing that, James. Good, thank you for sharing that um, comment with Natalie. Some of our, Robin said, some of our auxiliary council for board members continue to support organizations. Thank you. Look, I want you guys to come. You don't need to hear me talk. Remember this ED chat is about you. I don't wanna be talking. You guys can read in the chat room. So raise your hand, use the raise your hand. Some of my co-hosts come back on and co-host with me. Ben, Claudia, Janine, unmute yourself jump in here in this chat because everybody can read all of you guys are managing nonprofits. You're, you're wearing multiple hats. So I know you can read, jump back in here and share like, you know, for Claudia, you shared your weaknesses, I, I believe. Exactly. What, yeah. So going forward, when you start setting your strategic plan, and by the way, you guys, you can do strategic plans. You don't have to wait to the end of the year. You can do it in the middle of the year. What, what is your goal for moving forward, Claudia? Well, one of the things that we did uh, was to uh, start with a SWOT analysis, which was a real good um, strategic tool that we used um, to help us identify 
what task we need to focus on first. Um, and we started primarily um, with our weaknesses to identify um, what needs to be done, who needs, who do we have available that can do those tasks, and then um, move forward based on a timeline that focuses primarily on the weaknesses. Um, and when we meet with our board, that's how we identify the task um, by month that we were going to tackle. Um, the list actually was a pretty extensive list uh, and we broke it out into different months of the different things that we were going to take a look at. Um, and it all again started with our SWOT analysis and trying to figure out um, what we needed to do moving forward. Um, and I think one of the, the best things about the SWOT analysis is that it allowed us to go really deep um, into our organization and to really identify um, what our weaknesses were, um, giving uh, our board and our uh, advisory council time and opportunity to just really explore um, without any uh, inhibitions or anything of that nature. We just dived really deeply into what we saw as a weakness. And I think one of the, the, the good things about having a group or a team working on a SWOT analysis is that one person can feed off of another person, off of another person's ideas, thoughts, uh, concepts, and ideas. And that uh, has been extremely uh, beneficial for us to be able to, to do it that way. Um, I think also without having um, a SWOT analysis, we would not have had the courage to do some of the the things that we're doing right now, um, like taking a full step back. Um, and the, the, the SWOT analysis helped us to make that decision that that was one of the best things that we could do for our, our organization at this particular time. Eli shared a SWOT analysis link in your email. And I want to say you said something really powerful for everybody who's listening. I know you're here representing your organization, but Claudia kept saying, we, we, we. So, when you sit down with your organization, let everybody else tell you what they think the weakness of your organization. You may be surprised that they were even thinking that way or that they were even thinking this is the strength of your organization. So it, it's good to do that. Um, Janine and, and Ben, feel free to come on and anybody else who um, has their hand up. I know people continue to talk in the chat room. Go ahead, Janine. I was just gonna back up just a little bit to the uh, fiscal sponsorship issue. Uh, as I said, I'm involved with a couple of organizations and we did have uh, an, an emergence, emerging organization contact us about that. Um, and I found that really our uh, CPA was a really best source of advice for us on that because there are tangles you can get yourself in not only with funders but with the IRS and your status and all of those things so I think it's not something to be taken lightly with the Humane Society our uh, accountant actually recommended with some smaller um, organizations that wanted our help with that sort of thing so that their donors were getting the benefit of um, uh, potential tax benefits from donations. Uh, he suggested we, that we look at it more as they are projects of our organization. And then we're, we're basically funding certain things that they do, but we're not giving them money. Uh, but when their donors donate to us, we're able to earmark those donations, give them a tax receipt, and then help fund certain programs in, in most cases like spay neuter and that kind of thing um, through our organization. And that it's just, it's a little cleaner. It's a simple bookkeeping procedure and it doesn't get all tangled up into who's nonprofit and who's 501c3 and all that. Wow, that was a good one. Consider them as projects instead of partners, especially if it's not gonna be ongoing. So that was good, that was good. Yeah, that was good. And um, Ben, did you want to add anything? Yeah, um, so both Lex Mundy and Thompson Reuters have really good pro bono law resources for nonprofits. They'll, they'll match you up with a big, a big law firm that, that is looking to, to assist a nonprofit. So if you're interested in a fiscal sponsorship relationship, you might um, have the 501c3 partner ask for a pro bono attorney to help draw up your relationship and any agreements or contracts so that everything is set straight 
and you know, everything is in writing and, and done proper. Nice, nice, nice. I'm going to scroll back up because I missed um, some of the other topics that you all want to talk about. Um, I see somebody in here from Orlando, Florida. Why don't you come live with me? I'm here in Orlando, Florida. Executive directors coming in or exiting. This topic is critical for organization success. Yes, that's called a succession plan. So that's definitely something we should talk about. Thank you for putting that in there, Debbie. Um, difficult conversations with staff and collaborators. That's something that we all have to deal with. And that's something that we should definitely um, talk about. Maybe we'll do, we'll have somebody in here to talk about that. Again, I said on the, our first ED chat, if there's an area that you focus on or that you're an expert in, let me know. Send me an email. You can send me an email at webinar at techsoup.org. You can contact me on the events page. I would love for you to co-host with me. I don't want to be the one standing up here. I'm talking all the time. So become a co-host with me. Def definitely let me know. Jer Jared said that he would like board member training, accountability, and recruiting. Definitely something all nonprofits need to do. Make sure you all put this on your survey. Event management. As in-person events come back, we'd love some guidance on new trends in live events and auctions. Live events are definitely coming back. Um, people are saying they, they want to do a kind of a hybrid, kind of a live and, you know, a Zoom event as well. Some topics that Natalie said she'd like to discuss how to effectively find and assess the right managed IT service providers. Very good. That's something you probably would want to find in your area. But as you know, TechSoup has a service department if you need um, guidance with installing some of your software. We'll walk you through that. What are the requirements for, okay, we got the fiscal sponsor. Okay, good. Lots of more comments come in the chat. Okay, great. You guys are, um, we will definitely send the replay out of this video because I know there are lots of tips, lots of things you may want to take back to your board. We will also send the chat and um, you, so you'll have everybody's information. And if you want to make sure that you, great. Thank you, Eli, for putting that in there. Make sure you sign up for the next ED chat. So I'm going to let my co-host give us some closing words. I will start with Ben, and then we'll go to Janine, and then we'll go to Claudia. OK, um, I, I'll put another pitch out for Smart Response. Um, I'm sure some of your organizations are involved in providing um, critical services after disasters. And we've all seen that after events, um, oftentimes the wrong organizations raise the most money. You can think about what, what those organizations might be, but you know, think about large events and which organizations raise the most and whether or not those funds actually reach um, the local nonprofits on the ground that are doing the work. And so our goal is to curate localized lists in order to do that, we need to know who is actually present and doing the work before disasters in communities around the country and around the world. So, so far about 600 organizations have self-registered on this platform from 58 countries and 26 uh, US states and territories. And we'd like to have as many organizations, we're talking at least a couple thousand, register and they share information. It's almost like a common grant application worth of information. So the moment something happens, if you lose your power, we can still do PR and try to get more people to know that your organization exists and support your organization directly, not even through us. So we're not, we don't even handle these funds. The goal is to, is to have accurate how to help lists for media and for donors. So I'm sure some of these nonprofits on the call are in, in a, you know, do provide services in your communities after events, large and small. And we hope you will consider registering on smartresponse.org. It's free and happy to answer questions at a later time. Thank you. Awesome. That is great and much needed because when hurricanes hit here in Florida, whoa. So thank you, Ben. And thank you for being a co-host with me today. Janine, you. you're welcome. Um, Janine. This builds a little bit on what Ben was saying. Um, there is a real trend some of you not, might not be aware of in animal rescue right now 
in actually partnering very actively with social services organizations, which I'm sure many of you are, uh, because of that connection of uh, animals, pets, and their value to people's mental health, um, keeping people from feeling so isolated and that kind of thing. And, and so in disaster planning and in social services and all those things, um, I think you'll find a lot of willing partners in humane organizations because we understand, uh, and you, you've seen that probably with the hurricanes, um, you know, there's a lot more emphasis now on shelters that will take in pets as well as, you know, families, so people aren't leaving their pets behind, things like that. So, um, you know, if you're in social services, give some thought to reaching out to some of your humane societies and uh, rescue organizations and partnering with them on disaster planning and on, um, you know, sharing resources and uh, referrals for people that may need help, need help with their pets, that sort of thing, because we can be good partners. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being a co-host today, Janine. Claudia, hello. Hello. I, I just thought I saw Ben's hand up again. That's why I was hesitating a little bit. Okay, no, okay. Um, getting back um, to what I was saying a little bit ago about um, the SWOT analysis and how that particular process has really helped our organization. Just want to encourage people as they do their SWOT analysis to um, think um, differently um, when you're uh, working on your SWOT analysis. Um, and then as you're thinking differently, really be honest um, about what your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. Um, and then as you go through the process, um, don't rush, um, just take your time. Uh, I believe that uh, the SWOT analysis is not only going to save um, the work that we do in our community, but it's going to help better position us to be able to help more um, victims of domestic violence as we move forward and as we begin to strategically figure out our next steps. So I, I, I'm, again, grateful for Aretha and Teksu for hosting this room and this space um, and I believe that it's going to be extremely powerful uh, for organizations as we take the opportunity to work on our um, uh, strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Carol, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just, I wear another hat also. I'm the ED for a, a foundation that gives out grants. And I would just like to uh, remind people when you apply for a grant, make sure you fulfill that. You really meet that requirement. I got 90 grants as last applications this last cycle and 30 of them did not meet the requirements of our grant program. Their mission didn't fit into our mission. And it's very sad to me that people are wasting their time filling out a grant request and they're not fulfilling, they're not even eligible. And wow. so I just would make that recommendation. Just really read the details. Yeah, I say that all the time. I used to be a grant writer, so I know your pain. I used to be a grant reviewer. I know your pain. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Hi, April. Hi, I just wanted to say that um, in our organization, we do the SWAT uh, by country, and we've done it in several of the countries, two of two of the four countries I work in so far. And in both cases, it was an encouragement to the staff. Um, you know, the staff in the countries are from that country, and they always see the lack of resources, and they see the, the lack of, you know, what they think they need to do their job. And it's easy to get discouraged, but in, in, the, in both cases, they were amazed at what strengths and what, um, you know, what they could, how they could pair an opportunity with a, with a, with, you know, it's just very interesting for them to find out how they could come around with, for example, in um, Honduras, they, the women had asked to take classes on cooking plates of food to learn how to make different types of plates of food that they could sell. And the, the staff said, well, we don't have the money to buy the ingredients. We might could find, I said, well, you know, one of your strengths is that you're good communicators. Can you communicate with someone in the country who knows how to do that? And they said, oh yeah, we could find somebody, but we don't have the money to buy the ingredients. And I said, well, you know, we have these big events once a month. You have the budget to buy food for those events. So let's have the cooking class 
on the morning of the event so that you have the money to buy those ingredients and let's all eat something different every month. And you know, just helping them learn how to think globally or think mm -hmm. in the way that SWAT makes you think, you know, is very, very, very encouraging to them because they thought, well, they would never be able to do it. But with the resources they already had on hand, they could, and they've already started doing that and they've been encouraged mm -hmm. by that. So I think you can, you can convince people to do the SWAT if they think it's going to help them be more productive with the same amount of resources they already have. And I, I encourage you to do it in your organization if you haven't. It takes a lot of work and many of our constituents are illiterate and so they can't fill out a survey independently. We had to have people that would write very interesting answers, so non, not related to the question, but it was Thank awesome you. and I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. Angela, this is so sweet. This was my first engagement with TechSoup Chat. It's been very helpful. She's so looking forward to becoming more engaged in the future. Thank you. And we want all of you to come back. Type in the chat room before you leave one thing. What, what was one of your takeaways today? One thing that you enjoyed about this conversation today? And make sure that you do fill out the survey. We definitely would love for you to go out the survey and tell us other things that you're interested in. Type been one thing, what was your takeaway today? Type it in the chat room, thank you. If you can provide an event on grant writing, it would be a great help. We're struggling in that area, thank you. We definitely do that. In fact, there is a go to the events page, events.techsoup.org. There's a grant session coming up. And there, there are many grant sessions coming up. And there's one actually, oh, June 8th and June 15th. Um, Linda felt courage and it's going by so fast now, you guys, this is great. Courage and commitment of everybody um, for their organization's work. Yes, yes, one takeaway, we're all in it together. So true. Uh, Lorna says, it's reassuring to hear other solo staff members or EDs have the same issues I do. We are not alone. That is so true, Lorna. Rose Angela says, more opportunity Make an opportunity of a threat. I love that. Make an opportunity of a threat. That is powerful. RK says, one thing I took away are all the resources and networking. Yes, this is all about you. This is a place you can come and network. It was interesting to hear, Janine says, from organizations who work globally who face very different challenges. So true, Janine. I learn a lot every time they come on. Um, Carol says, how important that every board member participate in the SWAT. So true. Make sure you don't do this alone. I appreciate the sharing and attitude of openness. That's what ED Chat is all about. Remember, this is all about you. I love your comments. Um, grant writer, grant writer, are you really a grant writer? You need to come on here and, and talk about grants. Where, where, where have you been? Um, grant writer is a successful professional grant writer for the last 20 years. They put their contact information and their phone number. So it's somebody you can reach out, but I need you to come live, okay? I need you to come live next time on ED Chat, okay? Inbox me. Um, I think this is Lini. I love the way you spell your name. Love the encouragement on using our weakness and threats into our strength and opportunities. Would appreciate more grant tips. That is a big one. That is a big one. Encourage board to not work against executive directors. Powerful. Um, Claudia, SWATs are great strategic management tools. So true. Awesome. Uh, Deb says uh, she's also a pro grant writer. Next time, what? I, I told you guys, you all wear different hats. I need you to come on board. Thank you for putting that together. Um, Eli, thank you for dropping that in the chat room. You put how to do a strategic plan or how to do a strategic nonprofit SWAT analysis in the chat room. Look, I want to thank everybody again for being here with us today. We can't do this without you and it's really about you. So make sure you continue to come back. Make sure you, while you're taking care of the community, make sure you take care of yourselves, please. And drink your water. I'll see you next time on ED Chat. Bye everybody.